George Tillis, our senior markets correspondent from Salt Lake, has his eye on AppLovin and Sonos. Let's start with software first, George. AppLovin, pretty interesting business. We've had the team on a few times. Advertising a part of it, games a part of it, programming and app uh, 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 infrastructure, basically, that uh, they sell that also acts as a pretty good advertising medium. So what's good about this company? How come it's up so much? Well, I think there's there's a lot of stuff going on in the mobile ad technology realm. We, Trade Desk is down in, in the after hours. I didn't get a, a chance to look at all the numbers on that particular company, but I can maybe despair, give you some idea of why there's a difference between the performance of AppLovin and Trade Desk, which I'll explain in a sec. But if you think about you know marketing, monetization, digital ads, and even uh, when you look at uh, AppLovin, they have a mix between software uh, sales, but also their uh, their auction, if you will, they're uh, they're matching, of course, uh, bids and offers for uh, for publishing ads, and of course, sellers and buyers of ads, and that's effectively what Trade Desk does. So, you can really look at uh, AppLovin as sort of uh, you know a smaller competitor to Trade Desk, but you know if you look at the uh, performance year to date, it's up about 170 percent, and if my math serves me correctly, it's up over 20 percent in the after hours so far. With some pretty not, pretty good numbers. Uh, if you look at the uh, the estimates, uh, they were expected to, to earn about seven cents a share in profits. Now that's a huge swing from the six cents loss from the same quarter last year, uh, but it looks like they beat that. They came in at 22 cents, and that's a, about a 400 or so percent increase, give or take, relative to last year. Now sales also were expected to be down about 6.7 percent, but they beat the estimates, coming in around 750 million. So it looks like to me. The, the earnings estimates were low all alongside the uh, the sales estimates for the company, but they, they certainly beat the earnings estimates quite a bit more than the, the sales uh, decline that was estimated for the company. Now, one of the things about it going into this uh, quarter is I noticed uh, looking at Q1 uh, of last quarter relative to the same quarter last year, they basically earned uh, effectively over $200 million in free cash flow last quarter but if you see last year for the same quarter they lost 38 million so last quarter was a pivot quarter and i think that's one of the reasons why the stock has been moving significantly mm. since then not to mention i think there's a, an interesting play here for the ad monetization based businesses there's a lot of them out there i think there's a there's a situation where we're probably going to see some consolidation i'm not saying it's going to happen here for app Lovin. But at the end of the day uh, the company also has been buying back shares uh, so they are favorable to shareholders and they have effectively, this is where I think the disparity lies between this company and Trade Desk is, based on the forward estimates prior to the release and earnings, uh, they uh, they were expecting about 23% forward EBITDA growth, where their forward multiple is only trading at 15 times. So their peg ratio is less than one, where if I, you look at the Trade Desk, the forward multiple was almost 70 times, but their forward earnings growth estimates were about 23%. So it's about three times EBITDA versus AppLovin, which is trading them less than one time. So I think there's a valuation disparity occurring here in the after hours between these two businesses. This is what I surmise can explain perhaps the disparity between the two performances of the companies. There's mm -hmm. also, of course, more idiosyncrat idiosyncratic issues that I'm not uh, explaining here. But I think AppLovin was a good value going into this call and, of course, uh, being the estimates is causing what we're seeing in the after hours for this name. So it seems like they've um, shored up the bottom line uh, and haven't sacrificed a ton of revenue. I mean, look, it's definitely slowed the revenue. However, the market thought it was going to slow even worse. So when their outlook beats expectations, it's yeah. kind of like a double surprise. Your profits are improving. You've prioritized uh, you know, having that revenue make its way to the bottom line. And... Uh, you're not doing it at the expense of sales that the market might have suspected they would have had to. Yeah, that's correct. I, I think that's the case, OJ. But I also think, you know, going into the quarter, just looking at sales, the estimates were expected to be down about 7%. Now, if you look at the company, this is interesting, which, again, you know, for those who are interested, I'd like to know how they're actually generating these, these EBITDA numbers and free cash flow numbers on a year-over-year -year comps. You know, could it be basically... Uh, the way they're they're uh, you know supplying the marketplace their their so their software and services are they getting a lot of net revenue retention rates because if you look at their sales growth estimates on a forward basis they were only about five percent on a trailing it was three percent with this quarter estimated to be the worst of the the last four 
So again, next uh, next year, or based on uh, yesterday's numbers, or prior to the, the release today, the forward revenue estimates for this company was about five percent, but the EBITDA estimates were about twenty five percent. So that was about five times sales plus the fact that the uh, the forward multiple was trading at a significant discount to its uh, its growth rate. And, and I think that going into this, now I'm not saying that's the case all the time, but that was very compelling. You know, when I look at this prior to the close of the marketplace that I saw that, yeah, this is a, an interesting valuation proposition for a company that's not growing its top line sales very much, but it's getting a lot of economic value from uh, its capital. And, and effectively, I think that's uh, why it's higher significantly after ours. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of the analysts who cover the stock to reevaluate their ratings uh, based mm. upon this report as well. All right, nice, uh, great deep dive, George. Obviously, you've been following the company, so uh, appreciate that analysis. How about Sonos real fast? Still a little bit easier of a business model. Electronics, speakers mostly, and they're expensive, but they're good. Yeah, so looking at the uh, the report on this one, uh, moving in after I was about two dollars. It looks like the uh, the estimates for this that I had were a loss of seven cents, but they actually came in with a sixteen cent adjusted profit. Now I could be wrong on that, so I'm, I'm not going to uh, be concrete on that. But at the same time, it looks like top line sales uh, beat the estimates as well. Uh, coming in around 335 million versus the estimated, uh, uh, sorry, 373 million, forgive me, versus the 335 million estimate. So it looks like they beat on top line sales, but came in quite a bit higher on adjusted EBITDA with the company. When you look at it, uh, its stock is down about 28 or so percent prior to the close today, of course. Uh, the reason being is they're, just, they're selling expensive commodities. And so what I mean by that is, is uh, do they have a brand that seems to differentiate themselves versus competitors? They do sell a premium product, but at the same time, you have to look at the consumer appetite for premium products like speakers and, of course, accessories for uh, media. You know, is this the market environment for it? I suggest it's not because that's why the stock is down uh, pretty much uh, a year to day basis, about 30 percent. But it's getting a nice bid to the upside today because they have been reducing expenses. Uh, just some of the news articles, you can go back and look. They've been cutting back labor. They actually, have been uh, not not renegotiating leases or canceling leases uh, or not re-upping leases. And they're cutting cutting expenses dramatically, plus the company is profitable. Uh, $0.82 cents est estimated for the full year, trading around 19 times forward earnings. But the challenge here is uh, what's going on with the forward sales growth, because the forward sales growth, based upon what they – reported last quarter for the remainder of the year was flat to slightly higher, less than 1%. Okay, and we still see that uh, revenue growth less than 1%. I guess it's not negative. Better earnings, though, okay? They're moving in the right direction, flipping that over. Uh, one we got to continue tomorrow, though, GT. We're out of time, my man. Okay. Thank you very much, George.